The details panel is where we can affect the patch and appearance of fixtures either on an individual level, or you are able to bulk select and edit multiple fixtures to have the same properties. The first section is the patch data section. And the first field is a fixture type. And we also have the ability to change the fixture type on the fly. So for example, I'm going to select some mega pointies in our scene. Just select a few of them. And then here, if we hit change type, we'll bring up the swap fixture type window. So here we can search for whatever we'd like. So I'm going to search for, let's just say a Viper. And we'll choose a Viper performance. And here we can choose, choose which mode that we'd like to select. So I'll just leave it on extended. Next, we have the option to rename labels and then add prefixes or suffixes. I'm just going to add the prefix of the manufacturer and then hit confirm. Now we can see that the models in the viewport have changed. And in the details panel, we can see that the fixer type is now the Mac Viper performance that we changed it to. So this is super easy if you want to just quickly swap out fixtures. Under it, we can change the fixture mode using this dropdown. So here you can easily swap out the fixture mode on the fly as well. Under it is the fixture number and patch, but as you can see, it has multiple values in the field. This is because each fixture has its own individual patch. So each fixture will have individual, and if you select multiple, it will say multiple values. So please take care to not inadvertently change multiple fixtures patch to be the same. The location and group fields are user fields that can be used for organization. More functionality may be coming down the road that will properly utilize these fields. The UID field is for MVR imported fixtures and should not be changed by the user. Next is the display section. This is common for all Carbon DMX assets. First, the fixture number and patch options. So if I select all of these and then turn on fixture number and patch, you can see in the viewport that we have the patch and the fixture number visualized in the scene. Next, we have front arrow and power indicator. This is very good for determining the orientation of the fixture to make sure that they are facing the right way. So here we can see that the power indicator is on the back and the front arrow is at the front. So this lets me know that my fixtures are facing the wrong way. So let's rotate them. If we try using the Unreal Rotate tool by pressing E on our keyboard and then rotating them around, you can see that they're all pivoting based on this fixture's position. This is not what we want. So I'm going to undo that rotation. And then I'm going to go to the Carbon menu, go to Carbon Tools, Transform. And under the Rotate section, I'm going to put in 90 degrees, and we're going to rotate along the z-axis. So here, if I zoom in on our fixtures, and if I rotate it 90 degrees negative, we can see that they are rotating. And we can rotate them however we'd like. You can also put in smaller values like 45 degrees, and you can rotate them as you wish. But now our fixtures are facing the right way. Next is a hide geometry button. So here we can see that we can easily hide the geometry of the fixture. This can help save performance in some cases. The final option in the display section is a material override option. So if you would like to make your fixtures more custom, so for example, we can search for a metal texture. And here you can see that the material of our fixtures have been changed to a more shiny metallic material. So you can change it to whatever you'd like. So I'm going to choose this material here. The next section is a section that is only available on static lights. Keep in mind that the details panel may vary depending if you have a moving head or just a regular static light. So for example, I'm going to go to the carbon library and then I'm going to add in a source 4. So I'll just pick a random one and then drag it into our scene. 
I'll just move this up and position it just right here. So now in the details panel, we see this accessories section. So here we can add on different accessories to our static light. So for example, color filter, color mixers, gobos, animation wheels, and framing shutters. So let's say we want to add a different color onto this. So we can check on color filter, then open the color filter section, and then we can just add any color we'd like. You can also add predefined ones based on manufacturers. Under it, we have the manual control section. So here, I'm going to zoom in on our fixture. And here we can see that we can manually pan and tilt the fixture to position it how we'd like. So let's say I'll move this over a little bit. And let's say that we want to aim this on the statue. So in the display section, we can turn on the aim arrow. And now we can see exactly where it will be aiming. So now we can manually position this onto the statue. Something like that. So now you can see exactly where it's aiming. Next is a fixtures override section. So I'm going to select my VL3500s as they have gobos equipped. Right now if I go into play, we can see that they are on the default gobos that are on the fixture. However, let's say that we want to swap it out to a different gobo. So what we'll do is go to the fixtures override section. And then we're going to go to the gobo wheel one override section. To override any gobo, just simply press this add element button, open the index, and then first we're going to choose the slot number of the gobo. So in this case, it is slot one. And here we can choose whatever texture we'd like. So I'm going to choose this one. Now if you hit play, we can see that we have overridden the gobo to the one that we selected. You are also able to choose the insertion angle that the gobo comes in. If you'd like to go back to the default gobos, simply just remove all the elements, and then we can see that the gobos have went back to how it was before. Next, we're going to go to the module setup section. Once you go down to the appearance section, you'll find three main sections, the light settings, beam settings, and emissive settings. Your light settings affect the actual footprint of your light. So you see the actual projection of the gobo is your footprint. And if I change it, the actual light that is on the stage and colliding with the object is a footprint, while the beam settings will affect your actual beam that is traveling through the air. So first let's go to the beams or to the light settings. So first we're going to go to the light settings. Our first option is a development purposes only setting that should not be changed by the user. Next is a light type. So we usually do not recommend changing this unless it is absolutely needed. Footprint only only uses a distribution of light while complex allows gobos and shapes in the footprint. Footprint is less complex and renders at a higher frame rate, but complex will give you more detail. Next is light intensity. As a reminder, all of our intensities are measured in lumens. So you can change this if you want more artistic control out of the specified intensity. Next is the attenuation or the distance that the light will travel. So a shorter attenuation will mean that the light will not reach a further distance, but if you have it longer, then it can reach further distances. Shorter attenuation numbers will improve performance at a visual sacrifice. So you can match this to your needs in your scene. Next is your light resolution, which will affect the resolution of your actual footprint. The shadow resolution scale will change the scale or resolution of your shadows. Lower numbers on this setting can affect your performance. The next two settings are with use with the Unreal Exponential Height Fog. So this is found in the visual effect 
and exponential height fog. This can give you some fog in your scene, but this can come at a performance cost. So usually this will only work with static wash lights that don't move. If you enable this, you'll want to disable the carbon beam, but we just recommend using the carbon beam as it'll give you more performance and higher visual fidelity. Finally, we have cast shadows. So this will allow your light footprints to cast shadows. So for example, with shadows on, we can see that once the light collides with an object or a geometry, it'll not pass through and cast a shadow. But now we can see that if we turn off cast shadows, then we can see that our footprint will not stop once it collides and it'll just pass through. This can save you a lot of performance, so you can use it at your expense. Next, we're going to go to the beam settings. Type is the complexity of the beam, so simple and complex are the most common, where complex will allow a gobo or other function to appear in the beam, while simple will be only uniform, so used for wash or color only. Shadow mode is an experimental mode, where you can stop the beam when the light hits an object's collision volume. We'll have a separate deep dive video into this concept in a separate video. Beam intensity is the actual intensity or density of your individual beam. So again, you can adjust this if you want more creative freedom in your scene. Attenuation will be the distance that the beam is drawn. Be very careful with this as large values can become very costly to render out. In the advanced settings, we have more fine-tuned settings that you can adjust to help improve performance but we're going to cover this more in the carbon settings section. Raymarch samples will adjust your quality. Higher numbers will be better in quality, but it'll lessen your frame rate. Again, you can adjust this globally in the carbon settings panel. Custom depth path is an experimental option only for use for AR front plates. Multi instance is also experimental function and you should leave this as default. Finally, under the emissive settings, we only have one setting, which will adjust the emissive intensity. This will adjust the brightness of the lens while facing the camera, and it can also affect global illumination if you have lumen turned on. However, you may notice some artifacting, so you can adjust this if needed. Finally, we have the simulation area of the details panel. This is for use with sequencer only, so we recommend not touching this, unless you want to disable DMX. Now that we've explored the details panel for individual fixtures, you may want to adjust your overall appearance and performance settings. We'll cover the carbon settings panel in our last lesson.